I know my vibration based on what's manifesting around me and how I feel. Yeah. I know my vibration. Those are really good words. I know my vibration. Therefore, I know my point of attraction. I know where I'm in the universe. And most important, I know where I am in relationship to my inner being. So it seems to me, yeah. until there is a thought where I meet a, a thought, that I don't truly know where my vibration is because it hasn't been manifested really? or anything yet. That's right. That's right. So good on physical experience. Doesn't that make the manifestation seem important? Yes. And is the thought a manifestation? Yes. Yeah. And can we call all that realization? Yes. And can we call realization creation? Mm -hmm. But I get some weird, sick thoughts sometimes. <laughs> and I go, hmm, I, my inner being must be in some sick place. So, so let's talk about this. <laughs> so your inner being is not in a sick place. Well, uh, <laughs> we're having fun. <laughs> but what you are wanting more definition about is about what the receptive mode is. In other words, when you get into your vehicle, that's where Esther most often thinks of the receiver of her radio stations. The receiver, you can tune it to any broadcast channel, yes? You're in the receptive mode, whether you're listening to one station or another, you've set your receiver into the receptive mode of that. Uh, so there's the receptive mode of your inner being, and there is the receptive mode of trouble and torment. And so when something occurs to you, this is why your first statement to us is so important. I can tell by the way I feel and by the way it plays out what my true receptive mode was. So if you're in that high flying, in tune with pure positive energy mode and it feels like exhilaration it feels like passion it feels like love it feels like interest it feels like clarity it feels like sureness and certainty it feels so good and as it unfolds it feels gooder and gooder and gooder and gooder and gooder you recognize that don't you yeah. and if you're overwhelmed or if you're defensive or if you're angry and you feel inspiration Esther remembers many years ago she and Jerry had been wandering around a parking lot. It was maybe the first month that they were together. And they'd been driving around a parking lot at the Sheraton Harbor Island in San Diego, looking for a place to park. And it was late at night. And they really wanted to find a place to park. And there just wasn't one. And they drove, valley parking was closed, and they drove and they drove, and they had about 20 minutes invested in this. And there was a spot. And Esther's driving, and she went to nose in it, and a car that had already passed it is now backing up to it. And he gets out of his car and bangs on Esther's window and demands that this is his parking place. And Esther really felt like it was hers. <laughs> she was there first. She was nosed in. She had parked the car, and he wanted her to back out. And he said, couldn't you see that I was about to reverse into that place? I had passed it, and I was going to reverse into it. Well, he had passed it a long time ago. <laughs> so Esther backed out, and he pulled in, and Jerry and Esther went to bed after another 20 minutes of waiting for another parking place. And in the morning, when they got into the car to leave the parking place, Esther drove past where that car was and it was still sitting there but all four tires were flat <laughs> and Jerry looked at Esther and he said <laughs> you didn't <laughs> Esther said I did <laughs> felt really good too <laughs> he had it coming in other words, she had actually put herself in her bed before she received that inspiration. <laughs> Just seemed like the best idea she'd ever had. She knew Jerry wouldn't go along with it, so she got dressed, took a nail file. She didn't punch the tire, she just used it on the valve. Shh. Snuck down, let the air out of all four tires. And it felt like a really good idea until she saw Jerry's face. He wasn't proud of her. <laughs> <laughs> he 
he was in a different receptive mode <laughs> so what we're getting at is the guy did have it coming in other words it was his point of attraction he'd been very demanding and unreasonable and he'd bullied his way in and Esther just wanted to level the playing field a little bit and we're certainly not encouraging those actions we're just saying sometimes you get an inspiration from someplace other than in your state of alignment and you can tell by the way it feels now as it was happening to Esther in the momentum of her anger and in the momentum of the injustice of it that just seemed like the best idea in the world when she's in alignment that doesn't seem like a very good idea it was almost the last bad thing Esther ever did <laughs> but you get the point that we're making is that impulses that come seem perfectly normal given the momentum that you have going and you cannot really be a good evaluator of what it means in the big picture unless you're in that high flying mode but you can't know how to be in the high flying mode unless you have some of the other experience and therefore nothing that you do is inappropriate in your way to coming into full alignment with who you are yes mm -hmm. helpful so far <laughs> so far so now what do you have more <laughs> i'll let you flow <laughs> well we think that we're all in a place of understanding this it's tricky for you because as you hear us reveal esther's deeds <laughs> which side of it were you on you gasped you were shocked 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 <laughs> And yet you sort of understood too, didn't you? And you've done something like that too, haven't you? <laughs> the reason that we're having this conversation is because we're not wanting you to evaluate the rightness or the wrongness of the action. We're wanting you to understand the receptive mode from which it was inspired. And we're wanting you to understand that you cannot regulate, you cannot prosecute, you cannot execute. You do not have control over the receptive mode of others you do not have control over what they do and you can't stop the momentum you can't get into a guarded enough place as an individual or as a society to stop unwanted momentum but you can have your personal experience and your personal experience with who you are you can come into a clearer space you can move yourself gradually and steadily into the receptive mode where all of your power is and we want you all to know that in that receptive mode of your source energy the leverage of energy this is the energy that creates worlds you can grovel around and let air out of tires and bicker over parking places and such in your physical world but that's not who you are you were born to come into alignment with the fullness of who you are and when you do then that's the current that you are riding and we think that that's what you are so angry about is that you know that there is that current that you can ride when often you're riding another current but you can't do anything about momentum that's already in motion that's really the point of all of this conversation you can't do anything about momentum that is in motion other than allow it to play itself out so we have a visual for you so envision a plane taking off so it's on the runway and it's gathering speed and it takes off and it gradually gets itself up to 35,000 feet so you can sort of see this gradual and now think for a moment about the momentum of that think about impetus think about momentum think about energy think about jet fuel think about whatever you need to think about to think about that momentum so it's at 35,000 feet now out there under that airplane envision a rocket and watch it fire and get to 35,000 feet which had more momentum this or that rocket it did didn't it and how did it accomplish its faster momentum more deliberation and there's focus decision in other words it's two different ways of going about achieving maybe a similar thing which is the 35,000 feet altitude that we're talking about as a goal so what we're saying to you it does not matter what your trajectory of momentum has been relative to any subject you have the ability here and now 
to become more defined in what you're wanting and more focused upon what you're doing and you have the ability to get your momentum going in the direction of what you want anytime but in order to be that rocket with that faster momentum it is necessary that you engage this energy that creates world there's a leverage and alignment that just isn't present under any other conditions and so we're happy to have this conversation with you about the different receptive modes that you might be in and we're also happy that you understand firsthand what it feels like to be in the receptive mode that is something not who you now are in other words you can't connect with source energy in the way so many of you are doing you cannot connect with source energy in the conscious deliberate way that so many of you are doing and ever be happy in your indeliberate approach to life experience you know too much you can't go back you cannot be a deliberate creator and then be a sloppy creator and ever give yourself a break about being a sloppy creator it's just what the expansion and evolution is and that is as far as we will go in explaining your unhappiness with being in that lower receptive mode now we ask you in light of what our friend was asking earlier do these explanations about the laws of the universe help you does it help you to understand why things are happening for you and others the way that they are does this knowledge give you more insight as to what's happening and do you need your own exposure to life and your own ability to apply what you're learning in order to find out how it really works the words don't teach but the life experience does are you in agreement with that yes indeed doesn't it feel to you like we're all making too much of all of this that you could just get into a happy place you could just get into a happy place so why don't you just get into a happy place why don't you just cut it out and get into a happy place we're serious about this question why do you not just stop with them and get up here where you belong why why Abraham tell me why well use your logic tell us what is it about programming programming is a good word what is programming beliefs what is belief thought you keep thinking what is all of that momentum mm -hmm. momentum so even though you might be going like this do you have the ability at any time to just decide to be a rocket on a subject and go yes. could you focus could you get deliberate about something yes. so let's take just five minutes here and do that and then we'll take segment of refreshment so what are positive momentum building statements that you could offer for yourself what's a really base statement that you could make something that's right at the core of who you are things are always working out for me that might be a little too advanced you might not believe that I'm a good person how about this one it is what it is everybody can get there it is what it is it is what it is how about this I give up I give up I give up the struggle I give up the battle I give up the deception of control I give up the uncontrollable I give up the deception of control I give up I give in 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 to what I give in to my ultimate well-being I give in to my goodness I give up the battle and I give in to my goodness I give in into what I give in to alignment is it moving you in any way you're giving up the battle and you're giving in to alignment you're giving in to your goodness you're giving in to the inevitable worthiness that is you you're giving in to the unfolding of life you're giving in to what you gave into when you decided to come I'm giving in to the probability of happiness giving in to relief I'm giving in to ease I'm giving in to natural I'm giving in to flow I'm giving in to goodness I'm giving in to clarity I'm giving in to the receptive mode I'm giving in to getting a good idea I'm giving in to relief I'm giving in to ease I'm giving in to fun I'm giving in to joy I'm giving in to not giving <laughs> a rat's ass <laughs> about what anybody else thinks about anything I'm giving in to my alignment I'm giving in to my connection I'm giving up the struggle I'm giving up the battle I'm giving in to ease I'm giving in to power I'm giving in to clarity I'm giving in to a nap I'm giving in to sleep I'm giving in to rest I'm giving in to feeling good I'm giving in to happy play this game with yourself